This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Modifiers can also be applied at the subobject level. Let's see if we can't have some fun with that. I'm using a file named subobject modifier. You can find it in the working files folder. Let's select the box, then convert it down to an editable poly. In the modify column, I'll then enter polygon mode. In the front view, starting at the top of the box, I'll window down, selecting about three quarters of the polygons. With those selected, I'll enter the modifier list, adding a taper modifier. Working on the taper in the stack, I'll now open up the plus sign to the left of its name. Once I do that, I'll drop down to the setting called Center. This gives me the opportunity now to be able to control just exactly where on the taper the effect originates from. In the front view, grabbing the green stick on the gizmo, I'll move the center down to the bottom of the poly selection. Once I've done that, I'll return to the top of the taper in the stack, then head down to the parameters. For the amount, I'll type in negative 0.85. Using the down arrow on my keyboard, I'll drop into the curve value, taking that to 1.25. Not bad, but let's switch it around. We'll take it to negative 1.25 and see how that looks. There we go. We'll leave it there. In order to now be able to make an additional polygon selection, I'll add an Edit Poly modifier to the stack. That's one of several different ways that you can make a subobject selection in Max. Let's now activate the front view, taking it full screen with the Alt W keyboard combo. Let's now right click on the screen, activating Polygon Selection Mode. OK, right below our current selection, I'll now window select the next five rows of polygons down. There's one, two, three, four, and five. With my selection, I'll now go back in the modifier list, this time adding a stretch modifier. With the stretch applied, I'll take the stretch amount to minus 0.5. OK, now I can work on the remaining polygons on the bottom. This time around, as a way to make a poly selection, I'll use the Mesh Select modifier. Mesh Select is nice because when only wanting to make a subobject selection then moving on, like immediately adding a modifier, Mesh Select is a little bit lighter computationally so there's a little less overhead in the file. Let's go in the modifier list, looking for the Mesh Select. We'll open up the entry in the stack, getting down to the polygon level. Back on our scene, we'll select the bottom three rows of polygons. For these, we're going to add a Spherify modifier. Let's open the list, go down to the S's, and choose Spherify. Why don't we go ahead and shade our view up real quick so we get a better idea of how things look. We'll do that typing F3. Then to get the edges visible, we'll type F4. OK, now we're going to make a couple copies of this. Let's roll our wheel back to zoom out and we'll reposition this closer to the top of the screen. Let's now make some copies. I'll first activate the angle snap by typing A. That'll make sure that when we rotate things around, it'll be done in equal increments. Let's activate our Rotate command, then hold down the Shift key. Grab the yellow ring and let's rotate 90 degrees. When we get in that position, we can go ahead and let go. We'll change the Clone option to Instance. Then, down on the number of copies, we'll enter 3. When you're done with that, go ahead and click OK. Let's return to 4 views with the Alt W shortcut, then take the Perspective view full screen. We'll center things up, then orbit around for a closer look. That turned out pretty nice. Now because we instanced when we made copies, changing one will change them all. I'll go back and select the original object, that's the one on the top. Back in the stack, I'll drop down to the stretch and start making an adjustment. Let's take our stretch amount to about negative 0.7. So that's pretty neat how things turned out. Let's try something else. We'll right-click on the screen, then in the upper part of the menu choose Unhide All. Let's now select the blue box, move it to the side, then hit Z to center up. We'll then want to orbit around. OK, with the object selected, let's now either apply a Mesh Select modifier or simply convert down to an editable poly. I'll choose to convert. OK, why don't we type F4 so we can see the lines in our geometry. With that, let's now take our top view full screen. Now when you get there, type Z again to center the box. OK, back in the stack, we're going to enter Polygon Mode. What we'll now do is select five rows of polygons going around each side. This time around, when making my window selection, I'll go to the top left of the toolbar, changing from Crossing to Window. Now when the button's in the right mode, you'll see the white box in the middle of the broken square, not on its side. OK, now I'm going to hold down the Control key so I can make a multiple selection. Remember, five rows. I'll now do the same thing on the top. And I'll continue that on both other sides. 
There we go. Once we've done that, let's go to the front view full screen. When getting there, we're again going to want to set ourselves in the box. Go ahead and type Z. What we're going to do here is now window select only the bottom polys. Using the method of selection that I've chosen, I can now window around the bottom red line. Now it's pretty tough to see what I've actually gotten here. Let's go back to our perspective view full screen. Once doing that, let's orbit around the bottom and check out those polys. If our window selection was correct, they should be selected. Okay, so far so good. The goal now will be to invert our selection. Now Max has a special command for that. It's up in the Edit pull-down menu. We'll choose Edit, Select Invert. With the polygon selected, let's now move those down. Let's now orbit to a little more of a clear overhead view and then scale those out two-dimensionally. We want the polygons next to the side of our selection to not be angled but more straight down. In scaling, you'll want to light up the bracket that connects the red and green sticks. OK, let's orbit again to more of a side view. With our polygons now in place, let's add a noise modifier. Down in the Strength category, we'll leave X and Y set to 0 and take Z to 5. What this will do is start deforming our geometry in the Z axis. That in this case would be going up and down. A little farther down in the Noise settings, we have a category called Animation. Let's turn on Animate Noise. Once that's done, we'll play back our animation. As you can see, we've got a subtle movement now to the polygons that are selected. Let's stop the play and make another change. Closer to the top of the Parameters category, let's change the Scale to 10. This in essence will reduce the size of the noise that's been built into the modifier. Now once you've done that, let's play back our animation again. Take a look at that. We've built ourselves a little swimming pool here, complete with sides and movement in our water. So hopefully, that'll give you a few ideas about applying modifiers at the sub-object level. All you gotta do is make a selection and go have some fun. I'm gonna go ahead and save this out as Sub-Object Modifier Completed if you'd like to go in for a look.